Hey everybody, Daniel Newman here, Principal Analyst at Futurum Research, and I'm excited about this episode of Futurum Tech TV, where I will be joined by Kedar Kondep of Qualcomm, Vice President of Product Management. He's gonna join me now, but just as a little background, uh, yesterday, big announcement came out from Qualcomm, um, their new four series. I'm not gonna steal his thunder, but we're gonna be talking about a little bit of the innovation, the future of connectivity and 5G, and some of the things the company are doing. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to have Kedar join me here on the show. Kedar. Hey, Daniel. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome to Future and Tech TV. Thanks for joining me. Uh, second day back. We're not wasting any time. Um, <laughs> yesterday we had, um, you know, one of your colleagues, uh, Alex Katuzian, join myself and Pat Moorhead on my other podcast, my other show, The Six Five, and I'm super excited to have you here. So straight out the gate, no rest for the weary. We went straight into it, uh, Kedar, and Qualcomm went straight into it as well. And I'm, I'm really excited to have you join here. And I want to talk about the new 4 Series and the launch. But before I do that, I want to you know, go ahead and do a better introduction than I did of you. So why don't you uh, tell everybody out there on Futurum Tech TV a little bit about yourself and your role at Qualcomm. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Uh, pretty excited to be here. Um, obviously, we've had uh, you know uh, a great uh, New Year's to start with. Um, just uh, by way of introduction, I uh, I think I have the coolest job at Qualcomm. Um, I uh, get to uh, define all the new cool uh, Snapdragon products. Uh, so I manage the Snapdragon uh, entire handset business. So all of the products, uh, the software, uh, any of the cool uh, software apps that you see on any Snapdragon devices, we get to work with all the ISVs. Um, uh, what's even cooler is I get to work on uh, gaming. So partnerships with all of our, all of the game developers, the net engine guys, optimizing all the games on Snapdragon devices. And uh, with that, I get to have a lot of fun on the business side with operations and supply chain and all of the good stuff. So pretty fun role. I'm pretty uh, excited about the role I have at Qualcomm. Big job, big company doing really interesting things. Uh, definitely a staple at Futurum Research of our, our our various research notes of our opining. Just wrote a piece in Market Watch today talking a little bit about what you're doing in the four series RF. Uh, these are all things that you're focused on, either directly or indirectly in, in your role, just because of all the encompassing and uh, complexities of 5G. But I don't want to steal your thunder. I want to give you a chance to share. I hinted towards it in the beginning. Big news, uh, big launch, first day back from from break for most of the Western world and other parts of the world <laughs> that, that fact. You guys launched uh, the new 480. Share a little bit about what that is, the Snapdragon 480 and some of the highlights. Sure, definitely. Um, obviously, you know, we've been talking about 5G for a while. We've been talking about it for about uh, three, year, three years now at least. And uh, we introduced the first uh, 5G product in, uh, uh, at, uh, in Hawaii last year. Uh, and uh, it was the 865. And since then, we've had a whole bunch of products. We've had the uh, 765, the 690. So, and this is the first time we're bringing uh, 5G down to our 400 series. And uh, what basically the 480 does is, um, you know, from a 5G perspective, at least it offers like a global true 5G. So it works pretty much globally, every carrier, every band. And uh, from Qualcomm's perspective, where we excel is the whole modem to RF. So we make sure that the whole thing is tested, works great. Uh, in fact, even some of the speed tests, if you see some of the results uh, that uh, are generated, uh, we are uh, the fastest 5G in terms of uh, modem speeds. So pretty excited about what we uh, had to offer. Uh, with 480, we went uh, beyond 5G. Obviously, 5G is sort of the marquee that we all talk about, uh, but it went beyond 5G. So uh, tons of stuff that we've packed in the 480. So it's beyond, uh, um, you know, for example, we've uh, more than 70% of AI improvement. Or when it comes to, for example, CPU and GPU, uh, we've got about 100% improvement from uh, the predecessor. So lots of stuff that we packed in with the 480, uh, largely because we wanted to make sure that we're driving scale, we're driving 5G in all the tiers. And at the same time, we wanted to make sure we're offering uh, the best technology outside of even 5G uh, for every consumer that's out there. Yeah, it was a it was a really exciting launch. Um, you know, the first thing I said when I saw the news was really the company is is democratizing 5G and and looking to bring it to the world. The second thing I said is, oh boy, 
this is so packed with features that what's going to happen to the new 888? And so it was great, by the way, having Alex talk a little bit about that. Um, and I'm going to put his link because I think between the two of you, there's so much info here. And instead of having you repeat what he does, I want to hit you on a few other things. But um, that was the first thing we asked him, like, what happens now? Because you've put so many features and you've made a really complete offering. It's not a super stripped down four series. It's a it, 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 most users that aren't power users may not even realize what they have is, it, is a, a lower tier device. And that's a lot like what you've done with seven series versus eight, but now it's all the way down into the four series, which is was a really big step. And having $150, $200 devices that have 5G and all these features and AI and capabilities, very impressive, which leads me to my next question. The OEMs have to be thrilled. Um, volume, opportunity, uh, emerging markets, Talk a little bit about you know some of the plans of the OEMs uh, and what what they're going to do with this uh, 480 at their disposal. Sure. So obviously, um, you know, I'll be uh, as descriptive as I can be sure. without uh, revealing any OEMs. But I think a couple of OEMs have been comfortable with us uh, talking about their plans. So there's Oppo, there's OnePlus, uh, there's Vivo. Um, I think then there's HMD. So there's a few OEMs that have uh, been kind enough to let us talk about their plans. Um, we've been working with a lot of other partners, so the list goes beyond just the few that I talked about. Um, overall, I think you'll see some pretty cool, innovative stuff that they're going to launch with this device. You know, we've got, uh, uh, for example, we've got uh, triple camera, uh, triple ISP that we've integrated for the first time in the 400 series. So I think there's a lot of stuff that you'll see um, these OEMs bring to market. And uh, from a timing perspective, to be honest, Daniel, uh, uh, launches are technically in Q1, but uh, I, I would definitely uh, keep my eyes uh, and ears wide open because uh, I, I believe the launches are imminent. So it should be uh, soon. So it, early part of Q1. Well, I've only said that 19, 20, and 21 will be the year of 5G. So um, I figure as an analyst, if I keep making the guess for each coming year, I would be right. And, and, and in truth, for each of those years, there was a certain amount of right right in terms of it becoming tested and tried and then starting its commercialization but this really is the year of consumer scale i think we're going to see huge scale new market entrance more uh, choice in devices you're going to start to see probably more phasing um you know anyway i'm i'm i'm, I'm doing my analyst thing i want to hear it from you though talk about what drove the development of this of the 480 and the four series and just pushing this because this isn't something that gets done in a short order. This has been in the roadmap okay. for a while. Okay. So um, then if you think about it, right, if you go back in time, um, maybe in like three to four years, and I think uh, Alex alluded to uh, some of that, I think when he talked to you, right, he said he was talking about uh, how some of our premium tier development starts three years in advance. Uh, we talk about investing in technologies. We talk about how we're bringing, uh, uh, scaling all of our IPs, uh, whether it's CPU, it's GPU, the gaming IPs, uh, scaling them down all the way to our four series. Obviously, the planning for that started uh, several years ago. And uh, if you uh, just think about 5G, we wanted to make sure that uh, we're driving 5G to scale as quickly as possible. And that went beyond just enabling it in the market. We worked with a lot of carriers. So, for example, relative to 4G, you know, 5G, there's carriers that are ready to go. They've helped work with us. We've worked with carriers. We've scaled 5G. So the carriers are ready. We're ready. Our OEMs and partners are ready. And so there's been a lot of work that has gone into bringing uh, uh, 480 to market for the last several years. Now, when you think about it, uh, you know, from my perspective, beyond just 5G, you know, I talked a little bit about uh, some of these other capabilities that we have uh, packed in 480. But the last, I'd say, 18 months, a lot has changed in terms of how we're using uh, mobile devices, right? A uh, lot of consumers using tons of applications. Uh, take one, for example, like gaming. You know, the usage on gaming has gone up tremendously, as we've all seen. People are at home for the last about 9 to 12 months. Um, from what I hear, there's like close to 3 billion people now playing games. That's, you know, like a third of the world's population. I mean, look at the number of people just playing games. So um, when you look at some of these things that drove 480, 
uh, we took some of those use cases into account, right? So it's beyond just the CPU, beyond just the GPU. Um, think of, let's just spend a little bit more time on gaming. When you think of what drives gaming and what drives a good gaming experience, you talk about having like a good CPU, a good GPU. But beyond that, you know, you want to make sure that you have really good audio quality because you're wearing a headset, you're talking with your fellow gamers. If you're a professional gamer, then you want a very stable Wi-Fi connection. So we made sure that we have, you know, for example, the best Wi-Fi that's out there in uh, in this particular series. Then, for example, we made sure there's uh, echo cancellation and noise suppression and things like that. Then, for example, we put in AI based some of these uh, echo cancellations. So, you know, not always is there a direct correlation with how people understand AI. And for the most part, we don't even want consumers to uh, understand the technology behind it. But a lot of these subtle things that we put in, like AI based echo cancel cancellation or noise suppression, there's a lot of work that goes into it, right? In terms of making sure we're planning all these different, uh, you know, IPs and scaling technology. Uh, then, for example, camera, right? So we look at what's the most popular use case. Obviously, it's camera. We're clicking use cases. So we packed in like a 64 megapixel snapshot camera. Then if you look at what's another use case, hey, I want to be able to, uh, you know, my phone needs to last a while, so I need good power. So we moved to a, a very good process technology. Then we said, hey, if my phone is discharged, how quickly can I charge my phone? So we put in, for example, quick charge 4.0. We put in 120 hertz uh, displays. So think of it as we looked at all these different use cases. We looked at the technologies that drive it. And then we're very focused in how we were uh, defining the 480 in making sure that it packs all the technologies and goes beyond just 5G, which obviously, like I said, is a very uh, key marquee feature. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th for the average everyday user, that experience, I always talk about um, when we used to travel, it was what I referred to it, Kadar, as the airplane experience. It's the I've got five minutes before takeoff and I needed to download a Netflix movie so I could watch it in the, in the sky without Wi-Fi. And uh, that was something really 4G and LTE couldn't do. But with 5G, that's entirely possible. And you know that's the test. But now we're not flying as much. We're not out and traveling as much. So really, it's more like I'm in my home and everybody's tying up the, the Wi-Fi. Can I get on my 5G and use my own network, secure, safe, connected, fast, game, AI built in. You know, you got all, you just all the things that you need to have a great experience packed right into one device. And so I love the fact that the company is democratizing it, making it available. Um, one last question, got just a couple minutes left with you. You know, let's talk about the roadmap. And I know there's limited amounts that you can share. Everybody, if not, this would be the coolest, most popular show on the planet if you started disclosing the future. But in terms of what can be disclosed, you know, what do you see in terms of the 480 and, and how it's going to drive the mobile, uh, you know, roadmap for the company and, and, and really overall for the industry? Yeah. Um, you know, when you think about uh, when 4G first came uh, to market and first came to fruition and broad scale, nobody really predicted that, you know, we had GPS, for example, in our phones for a while. Um, and now just fast forward 10 years later after where we've introduced 4G. You have all these, uh, you know, ride sharing apps. You have all these apps, like one of the most popular uh, apps right now, even when we're sitting at home is ordering food. So, you know, think of how we're using GPS. Think of how um, e-commerce folks like uh, Amazon and Flipkart and all these guys are using, uh, telling you the precise location of your package and when it's getting delivered and so on and so forth. So when you look at 5G or by the way, even uh, video, for example, right? Uh, you talked about Netflix and being able to watch a video in the sky. I feel like we've, we've barely scratched the surface on 5G. And uh, there's a lot more, you know, uh, even when you look at gaming, it, we're barely scratching the surface in terms of what we can do with gaming and cloud gaming and so on and so forth. So um, without giving you a lot of information, there's a lot of use cases we're working on. Uh, we have a lot of partners that we're working with actively. And I think uh, uh, the good part of 480 is that it's going to be it's going to scale 5G. It's going to offer the same experiences, obviously at a different scale, but to every consumer. We're talking about more than 3 billion consumers now uh, that can have access to 5G. So uh, with 5G, it'll drive a whole bunch of new use cases. And honestly, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, nearly half the world. And, and as we've seen with each iteration of technology and each generation of mobile 
the app ecosystem, cloud ecosystem, edge ecosystem. You know, we didn't even touch here on autonomous driving and vehicles and the impact that's going to have smart cities. And, and thankfully, like I said, if you listen to the podcast yesterday between your, your commentary here and, and, and Alex's, we did touch on all of this, but there's a lot happening. And, and the coolest thing about innovation and, and in an innovation ecosystem, like you have with so many of your partners and OEMs and those that are indirectly tied in through infrastructure, cloud app and development is sometimes the tech, we don't even know because there's people you're thinking about, circuits and you're thinking about chips and systems and there's other people thinking about well, what can I do with software if we take uh, latency times to X right it was the people that actually dreamt that hey we can do we can do seamless language translation where people can just speak natively and not even have a, a flaw in their conversation and 5g and next generation AI are going to make that kind of con connectivity con uh, connection human interaction possible we make the world small. Uh, in a lot of ways, and it's it's super exciting. Nearly half the world's population is going to be able to access 5G with the 4 Series. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're aligned. We're 100% aligned. Well, Kadar, I want to thank you so much for joining me here today on Future in Tech TV. Quick segment. Love having you here. Love hearing your insights. I'm, I'm sure we'll have plenty of reasons to bring you back. I think 2021 is going to be a big year uh, for semiconductors. I said it last year. Say it again. Semiconductors will eat the world. Uh, in a really good way. They are making a difference every single day. So check out the show notes below. Transcripts will give you uh, insights where you can learn more about this conversation, uh, but you can also uh, get a link to the conversation we had yesterday with Alex Katuzian uh, over on the 6.5 podcast. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Stick with us here on this YouTube channel. But for this episode of Future Tech TV, for Kadar and myself, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later.